I apologize to y'all because I know, know y'all ain't got any sleep either. It's crazy. <laughs> oh, man. So what was today like for you? Oh, it's crazy. Only in Clemson. I mean, <laughs> only in Clemson do you have a day like today. And, uh, you know, you just – I mean, y'all know me. I just – I mean, I just kind of – I just say sometimes what pops in my head some, without really thinking uh, maybe the – you know, thinking it through, and uh, I was just simply trying to show, the, talk about the insignificance of the poll, and listen, we're not dialed in on that. We, we, the only poll we're interested in is December 6th. I think I said that in, in fall camp, uh, and uh, I have no idea where that came from in my head, but I just was, listen, we'll celebrate the poll. So you got, basketball's got uh, March Madness, we got poll celebration uh, party. I, I don't know what happened at the other three schools, but I doubt it was like this. This was crazy, but a lot of fun. And uh, I mean, our fans are amazing. I mean, amazing. I think they just all traveled right down from Charlotte uh, with no sleep as well. And, you know, last night was like a home game. I mean, it was incredible. Um, you know, the amount of orange and, and just, I mean, it, when our defense was out there, it felt like being in Death Valley. I mean, it was just amazing. So. Uh, today was was a day that I really, you know, as as this thing kind of took on a life of its own, and I had I had kind of chance to step back and say, okay, all right. First of all, the logistics of planning all of that, uh, a lot of people got involved, and I, I, I created some stress for a lot of people, but uh, it was a lot of fun. But I felt like this team needed to be celebrated, and uh, and our fans needed to be celebrated. So it was a great moment together. Uh, Thirteen and zero. I mean. It, that's just it, that's just so hard to do. Uh, uh, it, it is it is so hard to do, and I and I just and I said I told the players and I tell y'all the same thing as media. You you may not ever follow another thirteen and O team, and you know have some fun with it as media people too, because this is what you do. This is your passion. This is your livelihood, and you know I mean I would think it's a lot more fun to cover a thirteen and O team than a one and twelve team and try to figure out what you're going to talk about. Um, so I, I just think it's a special moment for everybody and try to enjoy the, enjoy the journey. Um, but it's really hard to do what this team has done. And just the consistency, not just this team, but the consistency that we've had for, you know, really quite a while uh, on and off the field. I'm just really proud of that. Uh, but right now, you know, we've gone pole to pole as number one. And I think that's, uh, that's a lot of fun. Uh, but now we, we get into a new season. It's a whole new deal. Uh, I mean, the Final Four is what it is. I mean, you're talking their Final. It's, it's, these these are four phenomenal teams. Uh, just toss them up. You know, uh, the, we're number one because we're undefeated. That doesn't mean we're better than them other ones. I mean, this is just a you're splitting hairs when you're talking about these teams. Uh, but it should be exciting. It should be a lot of fun. And I don't have any doubt that that uh, it'll be two great games and two two great teams will emerge. Um, we'll have to have great preparation like we always try to do for all of our bowl games. Uh, we, we, we don't prepare any different for this one than, than we did for any of our other bowls because uh, we want to win every game. They're all big. Uh, so this one, from that standpoint, really there's no change in that. Uh, but your margin for error is very small uh, when you're playing you know, a great team like Oklahoma. And people are going to bring up last year's game. That just absolutely has nothing to do with this year. You know, you go back and look at that game. As I've said, I mean, I've been on both sides of that. I mean, I've been on both sides of that where you, you have a night where the ball, you just can't hold on to it. It's, it's a scoop score. It's a pick six, a tip touchdown, you know, fumble in the red zone, whatever. And next thing, and you're playing a really good team. Next thing you know, you know, the whole game plans out the window and it's just uphill and it's really difficult. And that's what happened in that game. Uh, we're certainly not that much better than Oklahoma last year. I mean, we were on that day simply because of, you know, a lot of mistakes that they made in, in the turnover area. Uh, our guys played well and played clean, one of the cleanest games of the season. And, uh, but uh, it really has nothing to do with this year. Oklahoma is a new team. We're a new team. And uh, a lot of the players in that game for us, um, aren't here anymore. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll know we'll have to play our best four quarters of the season, and that's how we'll prepare. So, Coach, how did you emotionally feel when they announced your team to be number one today? Clearly we saw your face in the screen. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's just, it's just great to see it on the screen. You know, I, I, as I've told the local media here, I've, I've started voting us number one three weeks before 
the poll came out. And I told our team that. Uh, so, so to them, they've been number one uh, for, for a long time. Uh, but, you know, again, this poll right here is the only one that really mattered. Uh, all the rest of them, hey, it's great. Uh, but, you know, it, it just doesn't matter. Uh, the only one that was really going to truly matter and the only one that I really was interested in, and it didn't matter if we were one, two, or three, or four. I just wanted to be, be at the party and have a chance to compete for the, for the national championship. And, um, but to see, your, to see it live like that and to be able to celebrate it with you know, 30,000 of your best friends, uh, pretty cool, pretty special, pretty special moment. Well, it doesn't hurt, uh, you know, when, when you're 13 and 0 and you're number one team in the country, uh, everybody, I mean, you look on the TVs and you see Clemson, you see that brand, you see that Paul, um, it's, I mean, it's just, it's powerful. And I think it doesn't necessarily mean guys are going to come here, but uh, people want to, they're interested and they want to come see maybe what your program is about. Uh, and there's a lot of great programs out there, um, but uh, we always feel like if, we can get a guy to visit Clemson, then we have a chance because this place is really special. And there's a lot of people out there who haven't been here. And when they come, they see that, especially when they get around our players and, and just the people. That's the asset, the best asset that we have are our, our staff and support staff and the players that we have on this team. Um, but you got to get them here. So, you know, I think just the brand recognition and, uh, you know, maybe piquing the interest of people that maybe wouldn't have said, you know what, I need to go check Clemson out. Uh, but we've established ourselves, not again, not not just this year. We've established ourselves as one of the most consistent programs in the country for several years now, and uh, you know that's 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 our goal. That's our main goal because if we can just kind of stay in that area, then you know you're going to have some special seasons along the way, and uh, this has been one of them. Uh, well, I mean, I, I think that – I mean, I, I personally thought I liked the BCS. I didn't have a problem with the BCS. Um, I thought for the most part they got it right. Uh, but I love this setup. Uh, I mean, it's hard to win 15 games at this level. Uh, it's a very difficult challenge, that's for sure. But um, as I said last night, 13-0 used to win it. Uh, but it, don't, it just gets you a ticket now. Uh, but I think that it's a good setup, what we have. I think they got it right. I think they got the four best teams that have earned, you know, that. And, and I love the fact that we still have the bowl season and the tradition of the bowl season is in, and because um, it's just exciting to be a part of it and to see all these different teams get opportunities to go play another game in a, in a, in a neutral site and, and uh, get to, you know, just have that bowl experience. And the fact that they set this up, the playoff, to where the four teams still can have a bowl experience uh, and then you win the game, well, then there's that one more game, and, you know, you come back, and uh, now logistically there will be some challenges for us. You know, we start school on Wednesday, so uh, that's a little different uh, if you're fortunate enough to be in that. But I think they've got it right. I really do because I think it, it's, it's uh, giving college football a playoff format every single week. You know, people talk about the championship game. We've been in a playoff for the last six weeks. I mean, however you break it down. Final 64, 32, however, you know, 16, 8. Every week has been a playoff. Uh, and uh, I think it's just made college football even better. Uh, but, again, within the tradition of, of college football. So, I think it's fun and uh, right, right way, the way it should be. And they, I think they got it right. What about going to Miami, a place where the fans are familiar with, you guys are familiar with it, you played there this year, you had a lot of success this year. <clears throat> I think that's a good thing. Uh, I mean, we love the Orange Bowl. Uh, we know all the people down there. Certainly, our guys are familiar. I think this is this is our this is our third Orange Bowl in four years, I believe. And uh, I'm at five years. Third Orange Bowl in five years. Uh, so a lot of these guys have had the experience of it. And obviously, went down there this year and played in that stadium. So it's a great venue, man. A great uh, you know place to obviously to take a bowl trip. You're, you're pretty much guaranteed some nice weather. Uh, and Lord knows we need some nice weather here at Clemson. Uh, so it'll be, be uh, watch it probably rain three inches uh, when we get down there. But 
uh, you know, it's just they do a phenomenal job. And, uh, you know, that's the, the, the number one bowl uh, destination for the ACC. And uh, we have a great partnership with them. And, and so, uh, you know, just look forward to, to being a part of it again and, and getting down there. And uh, our guys, I think, that have been around here, they'll understand kind of the practice format and how we, how we travel. And I'll tell you the best part about going to the Orange Bowl is you don't wait on anything. It, the, the police escorts down there, it's like a presidential motorcade. It's the most unbelievable thing I've ever been a part of. And that was, that was actually a frustration. Last year we, we were late to about everything uh, because we, 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 uh, they wouldn't allow the, the escorts uh, for whatever reason from a city standpoint. But, boy, down there in Miami, man, they, they do an unbelievable job. And well, we know the bus drivers uh, and uh, can't wait to, to see all those guys. And, uh, I don't know where we're going to practice yet, but they always do a good job of setting you up uh, with good practice uh, facilities and, and the hotels. And it's, it's a great trip for our players. But at the end of the day, it's about, you know, uh, preparing to win and trying to play a great game. So we'll, we'll have fun. We'll enjoy it. I'll make sure our guys have a good balance. Uh, these are young people that have earned this. Uh, but but we'll be dialed in and ready to play. Coach, with the Sean set the uh, ACC championship game record for total yards last night, you broke, actually broke James Winston's record that you set when you won the Heisman. I know you believe that Deshaun is deserving of the Heisman, but if you could make a case uh, for the voters for Deshaun winning, what would you tell them? Well, um, I just think that he's so multi. He's not a guy that just does one thing. You know, I think the majority of the Heisman winners are, are what position? Quarterbacks. And I think that's a, there's a reason for that. Uh, it's, it's the most critical position on the field, and uh, everything goes through the quarterback. Uh, he, he's impacting the running game. He's impacting the protections. He's impacting the passing game, and, and he has uh, been phenomenal. I mean, this guy's 70-something percent completion uh, in, in the fourth quarter. He's been in his best in crunch time, and I think that's what the great players do is they rise to the occasion when called upon, and then they make everybody else around them better. And nobody's done that better than Deshaun. Uh, if you really sit down and watch all 13 games, and, and, and let, this isn't to take anything away from the other players out there because there's some incredibly deserving uh, other players um, that other people can make a case for. But uh, you know, what Deshaun has done, and he's on the only, he's, he's on the only undefeated team in, in, the, in the country. And a big reason why we're the only undefeated team is because we got Deshaun Watson. And uh, I think that right there in itself says all you need to know. Uh, so I, I can't imagine that he won't be in New York, but, but um, uh, he, he's the epitome of what the Heisman Trophy is all about, not just on the field, but off the field as well. And um, I think he's incredibly deserving, and I hope he wins it. He's had a lot of success the last few years in bowl games. What, what, is there anything preparation-wise that's kind of been key to that? Uh, well, just, you know, I've just got a formula that I believe in as far as how we balance things, you know, fundamentally, techniques, uh, going back to kind of some of the basics camp-wise. Uh, you have to kind of create that competitive edge, Clemson on Clemson, uh, have a mixture of that. You don't, you got to spend, obviously spend your time getting ready for the opponent, but, but you don't want to over-prepare. And then you want to uh, really take the time to develop your football team. Uh, with the op extra practices, you know, we got a lot of young, y'all know we got like 40 freshmen, 39, 40 freshmen on this roster. This is critical for a lot of those guys where we can really kind of get some of those guys that have played a lot of games this year and, and, and kind of put them off to the side and really take some extra time because we don't have a 20 hour rule. You know, they'll be, they'll be out of school. We got as much time as we need and we'll take some of that time and, and develop our team for spring practice. That, that is a huge part of what we do. And, uh, and then I think the other thing is, is you got to get everything done here, you know, because when you get to the bowl site, there's just, it, it, it's just not a lot of time for uh, uh, game planning and things like that. Let's, let's get ready to play the game right here, and then let's get down there and let's, let's polish the plan um, and, uh, and get these guys, you know, really dialed in on what we're doing and let them go execute and play fast and play free. Uh, so, you know, we've just got a formula that we believe in, and that's, that's what we'll continue to do. With the recruiting this week you got to do, and then the press conference on Thursday, the Heisman Trophy stuff and all that, can you talk about how your week's going to be hectic and how you're going to do it off? Well, uh, you know, one of the things that I really believe in is, is great preparation. 
And um, because when you when you prepare with details, then you just execute the plan. And you know we there's not one thing that's happening right now that hadn't been on my calendar since I did the calendar in July. I do the calendar every year for the year for the year July through the next August. Every day is planned. Every every practice is planned. Every recruiting meeting. Everything in our program. Every day that the coaches are off. Every weekend. Uh, it, we, we, it's a it's a thorough calendar. And the reason I do that is so that we have great structure. So, you know, we just execute the plan. Um, I, I knew that I'd be on the road. I'm getting ready to get on a plane and go to New York. Um, I've got a meeting tomorrow, and I've got the college football um, competition committee meeting Tuesday morning. Um, and then we've got the Hall of Fame Tuesday night, and then I'll be heading to Houston. I've got to go to Texas and do some recruiting. And then I'll and then I'll head on to Houston that at, that evening for the Lombardi uh, with Shaq, and then I'll fly back late Wednesday night, um, sometime I don't know what time I'll get here, and then I'll be back on the road all day Thursday recruiting, and I know I'll end up in Atlanta uh, so, sometime because uh, I know I've got a press thing, and then we'll have the uh, ESPN Awards show, which I'm, I'm, I'm that, that helped me this year. It's not in Orlando. It helped me that it's a little, little, little closer, so I can kind of manage some of the things that I got to get done and uh, so look forward to being a part of that and hopefully a couple of our you know I, I know um, well, I think Deshaun is the only one I don't know about the Mackey yet uh, with Leggett I don't know okay uh, so just Deshaun will be there at the ESPN award show so I'll be there for that and then uh, I'll come back Thursday night and then I'll be back out on the road Friday morning early all day and then I'll be back here Friday night for dinner with one of our our top prospects that is coming in here. And then uh, I, I plan to be on a plane Saturday morning flying back to New York uh, to be at the Heisman. And then I'll be back Sunday getting ready to uh, get back on the practice field and, and be off the road. And we'll have that entire, you know, whatever, 10 days or whatever it is uh, to prepare for uh, uh, the opponent and, uh, and to kind of get some, get some structure back with our guys. So it's good. Uh, we've got a great support staff. All of our, our uh, you know, player development guys and GAs, they'll do a great job of, of breaking everything down this week and, and you know, going through and, and uh, getting, getting everything ready for us coaches uh, on Oklahoma because everybody's going to be scattered out and on the road. But uh, it's going to be a fun week. It's going to be a busy week, but that's just the way it is. You know, everybody, last we missed a week of recruiting last week. But you can't have any better recruiting than doing what, exactly what we were doing, and that was preparing for our championship. So uh, we got some catching up to do. We got some state championship games that our coaches will be rolling at this week and Saturday. And um, so, uh, you know, again, it's be a, it'll be a long, crazy week. But we'll look forward to getting back together next Sunday and and uh, you know, kicking off our bowl prep. What conference reaction to the opponent? Uh, I didn't even see him. I didn't even see him on the field. So uh, uh, you know, that's. That's, I'm sure it's exciting. Uh, some more Oklahoma fans. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see. Uh, I tell you, they, they have really, they're playing as good as anybody in the country right now, uh, maybe best of anybody in the country. Uh, so we'll, we'll know that they'll be fired up to play us, and, and uh, you know, we will be too. Who are your players of the game and what you think about last night? Are you kidding me? We've had like three hours of sleep. Uh, 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 well, I can tell you right now, Ovin's player of the game was, was Deshaun. Uh, he, was, he was amazing. That's pretty easy. Uh, but uh, we haven't graded it yet. That's enough. when we get back, and that's one of the things. We had a team meeting at 11 a.m. Uh, with our team and uh, went over, you know, kind of the plan for the week and some things that we needed to, to cover with our team before I hit the road. Um, but next Sunday, I'll go through the honor roll and the game comments and all that type of stuff once we have a chance to really uh, grade it and evaluate it. Because we have a lot of things that we've got to learn and we've got we to you know, study that tape and get better from it. But uh, uh, we, we didn't have a chance to get it graded. So. Reactively, special teams, I mean, what kind of work do you have to do just with different issues? Uh, well, you know, I thought we did a nice job in special teams last night. I thought. Uh, uh, they, 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 they did get one, one decent return on us, uh, but uh, for the most part, we neutralized their, their great returner, the Switzer kid. We, we kind of kept him at bay all night long. And, uh, uh, you know, the, the play with Hugel, that, that was not a fake punt. Uh, that was – I'm Hugel, Teasdall. Uh, it was just a, a guy really making a 
really bad decision on his own. And uh, so, you know, that, that, uh, that, that was just not a special teams issue. That was just a bad decision. Uh, but um, kickoff coverage, we did a nice job. They were really good returners. I thought we did a really nice job covering the kicks. Uh, we executed well. You know, obviously the onside kick right there at the end, we disappointed that we didn't catch it clean. We had, a, we had two guys that have with, with good hands that the ball went right where we want it to, and we just didn't make that play. Um, but uh, we work on that all the time, and that's just, you know, that's a tough play. But uh, proud of Renfro for coming up with it. And, hey, another big field goal uh, that was huge for us by, by uh, Greg last night. And uh, Jim Brown went out with a concussion. And we got to throw David Estes in there. Do y'all know who David Estes is? Well, he's our backup snapper. Uh, and he's out there snapping in crunch time for us in, in the second half, the whole second half. Every punt, every extra point, everything, and did a great job. Uh, so, you know, I'm proud of our special teams. I think that, uh, you know, we're improving in a lot of areas. But, you know, we just got to continue to, uh, uh, you know, try to be very disciplined and sound and have great preparation. Uh, I mean, it seems like you talk to other guys about it, they enjoy it now. Yeah. You're one of the subjects from time to time. Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, well, that's a great thing. I think, uh, you know, uh, I, I, y'all all know I can imitate Coach Stallings very well. Uh, I got him down, but I spent seven years with him, and, and I, I think that means they're listening. I think that means they're paying attention. Uh, I can still repeat everything, all kind of stories from Coach Stallings, stories at the time I'd be like, oh, my God, if I hear this story one more time, seven years in a row. But there's a purpose in that. And, and here I am, you know, 25 years later, still telling the same stories. And that was the purpose, is, is to, to plant those type of seeds. And so I think it's great when your young men uh, can imitate you or repeat you. That means they're listening, they're paying attention. But Jay Guillermo has been uh, one of the bright spots on our team. He has, I think, part of it is what he went through. And he just has such a great appreciation and perspective for being able to play. He, 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 he's not – he just keeps it loose. And, uh, and he is just having a, the time of his life, and he, he's, he appreciates it. So uh, he's hilarious, got a great personality. And, and uh, you know, even during the games, you know, even during the games, he's, he just cracks me up. Uh, so I think that's great. Uh, I think Will's a great coach. Uh, you know, I think he's a great coach. I've known Will a long time, uh, going back to when he was a GA at Auburn and I uh, was coaching at Alabama. So uh, I think he'll do an excellent job. I think he'll he'll put a great staff together, and and uh, you know I think that's a a great hire uh, for South Carolina. I think he's uh, uh, you know, obviously didn't go things didn't go the way he wanted them to at Florida. Uh, and, you know, a lot of different reasons for that. But um, uh, he's a guy that, that I know is going to, um, you know, be thankful to have another opportunity, and I guarantee you he'll do a great job for, for, for South Carolina, no have doubt. Have you had any opportunities to watch Oklahoma play this year? Oh, yeah, several times, yeah. What are your impressions of them? Explosive, explosive. Good on D, uh, really playing well on D, and, and their quarterback is – Looks like Johnny Manziel running around out there. Uh, he's a nightmare. <laughs> he is an absolute nightmare. So uh, we'll have our hands full with that guy. Uh, uh, no, he, he he's coming back. Uh, yeah, he he's. Oh no, I don't I don't think he'll play. I mean, I I don't I don't I don't think he'll play. I think that uh, I know he'd like to play, but we hadn't really even talked about that. But as far as coming back next year. Uh, he'll be back with us, and I think that's a great decision by him, and he's looking forward to it. You As a you, former walk-on, do you have a level of appreciation for Baker Mayfield and going from walk-on to potential Heisman? Yeah, and, and, he, and I think he walked on at two different places. Isn't that correct? Uh, yeah, I think he's uh, – it's an amazing story. It really is, and he has done a phenomenal job leading that football team. And, you know, when I've seen him play um, – uh, you know, I love to see guys play with great passion and love for the game. And uh, all your walk-ons usually have that. Uh, and so I love to see a guy, you know, rise up and, and, uh, and, and be the best he can be. And, 
you know, we've had some good ones come through here too. Uh, I'll tell you, this Renfro kid is, is he's a special young guy. And just, he ain't even close to what he's going to be. He's going to be a great player here as he gets bigger and stronger. But, um, you know, he's, uh, Mayfield is a guy that, that, again, I think plays the right way. And I think his team feeds off of that. Anything else? This is it till next Friday, Monday. Unless you go to Atlanta.